Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a sea trout fly. Now this is way off the beaten track for me, but I've seen a picture on Facebook of a fly tied by Sean Thomas and it's inspired me to have a go at it. Now I've been asked several times to do sea trout fly patterns and because I don't fish for these species myself, I've been reluctant to do it, but I really like the look of this fly and wanted to give it a go. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the hook in the vise is a Hanak H25XH hook. This one's at size eight. It's on a heavy wire and it's a bronze hook. The thread I'm going to be using is Simplify's Nano Silk. It's at 50 denier and it's obviously black. Now as always with the Nano Silk, the first thing I'm going to do is add some super glue to the shank of the hook. Uh, sorry about the state of my super glue brush probably need to get a new pot but I'm just catching that in behind the eye and I dare say the more discerning viewers will have noticed that I'm using a barbed hook and uh, the reason for that is I'm going to be giving three of these flies away at the end of this video and I just thought that sea trout anglers may well want to have barbed hooks so I've laid uh, I've laid a bit of thread down and stopped my thread just by the barb of the hook. First thing I'm going to do is add some pheasant, golden pheasant crest. Now, this is a natural colour. I've got a bit here that was sent to me kindly by James Gardner, which has been dyed a sunburst. And this is the one I'm going to use today for this fly. I've got a strand here and what I want is to have it about the length of the shank of the hook. And what I want to do is catch that in just at the end of the fly. Keep the tail on top of the shank. Now, as you can see, I've got a few turns and I just want to reduce the length of that tail slightly. And I'm still able to do that because I've not wrapped lots of turns onto it yet. I'm gonna keep the length of this. This just helps maintain the width of the body. So I'll just keep all that on and then near the end, I'm gonna leave maybe two or three millimeters before the eye of the hook and catch that in. Now just let's have a look at that your side, that looks okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is add a silver rib and I've got some 0 0.1 millimeter wire in silver and I'll just take a little bit of that off my spool and I'm gonna catch that on my side all the way back up to the base of the fly. Now some of the sea trout flies, they're, they're lovely to look at, uh, but I couldn't get into sea trout fishing really. Uh, I like sleeping at night and not wading a river trying to kill myself. <laughs> but um, the flies look amazing. So I've got some uh, silver flat tinsel here. Uh, it's in a bit of a state, I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that off it's quite thin stuff, so hence the uh, the wire rib just to keep that in place. So I'll catch that in again on my side, and then I'm going to bring my thread all the way up, and I'm going to stop it approximately three and a half, maybe four millimeters from the eye. There's quite a lot going to go on at the front, so you need to make sure you leave yourself plenty of space. Uh, I've obviously have caught sea trout in the past, but it's been a bycatch when I've been either trout or grayling fishing. Um, I haven't gone out to specifically target sea trout. And as I say, a lot of the guys that do this, uh, they go out at night when it's pitch black and full credit to them. I have trouble wading during the day, never mind in the middle of the night. So I'm just bringing that body up, overlapping turns, you want to cover all that. And then when I get up to where I want it, where I part my thread, I can bring the thread over for a couple of turns, a couple of turns in front, and then I can safely come in and remove my excess material. 
Okay, with the uh, the wire rib, this is purely here to protect the silver body. I don't think uh, it being silver as well, it's not adding any real value to the, the pattern in regards to contrast and colour. But it will protect the silver rib. So I brought that up in as even turns as I can. And I'm going to catch that in with a couple of turns and then a couple of turns in front. Then keeping tension on the thread, I can simply twist my wire away. And uh, not that I know, but that's looking okay as regards to uh, fly pattern. So what I'm going to do next is add the hackling. And I've got a blue cock cape here. I would have liked a hen cape for this actually. I think uh, it would have looked much better. But I've only got a cock cape and I'm going to make do with what I've got. So I've selected a feather here and I've stripped away about two millimetres near the base of the, the feather. I'm going to catch that in again on my side. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. And then what I'm going to do is the spine of the feather, I just want to encourage to come out at a 90 degree angle from the hook shank. Next I'm going to find my hackle pliers in amongst the mess that is my time bench at the moment and I'm going to bring that over like so. Now as I come up I'm going to try and encourage the fibres to come out for the cock hackle just a little. Uh, this is why a hen hackle would have worked much better than the fibres are much more inclined to to bend for you. But I've got two or three turns in there and I'm fairly happy that that's all I need to get that splash of colour. And I'm going to come up and catch in the tip of my feather. Now once I'm convinced I've got that caught in, I can take my hackle pliers away going to lick the thumb and forefinger of my left hand, slick everything back and just tidy this up a little bit at the front and with the nano silk you get um, you get a lot of uh, opportunity to get a few turns in there to make sure it's not going to part company with the feather uh, and that's bending back just nicely now. Okay so it's going not so bad for a fly that I don't use or tie. <laughs> Uh, what I'm going to get next is some of this. Now, what this is, is foxtail. Now, you can use uh, buck hair, which um, will work just as well, but what the foxtail gives you, it's much easier to tie with, and it's also much more mobile than the bucktail. So, I'm I don't, you don't need much. I'm going to take approximately half a centimetre, and I will take that off. The little pelt I've got. Now what I want with this wing, I'm just going to take some of these outline fibres, is I want it to come just maybe some of the fibres slightly past the tips of the tail here. So if I lay that on like so, that's looking good. Now with my thumb and forefinger in my left hand, I'm just going to encourage my hackle to drop below the shank of the hook. Now excuse my fingers, I'm going to get a couple of turns with a bucktail and that's looking okay. Then I'm going to lift that waist piece, get a couple of turns in front of the material and then I can come in with my scissors and remove the excess. Again, excuse my fingers and there we go. So that's looking not too bad. I'll do some bending of these hackle feathers uh, as the fly's finished. So next then I'm going to use some bronze mallard. This one's from the Irish Plucker. Uh, one of the best bronze mallards you'll find anywhere and the reason I say that is you get these really nice dark feathers from uh, them. The trouble with uh, your shooting pals are great and all, uh, but often the, the, the feathers are a lot lighter than you would like. 
So I'm going to take approximately a centimetre, maybe a little more, and I'm going to pull that out at a 90 degree angle from the stem and then pull it away. What I'm going to do next is like a dabbler, I'm going to fold the two over to get my wing. Now the wing, the, the over wing should I say, is going to come no further than the butt of the body really. Maybe a little, but not much. So I'll dress that up. And also I'm not keen on it cloaking the fly. Uh, it's not a dabbler at the end of the day. So I'm going to catch that in. Bring my thread up over the head. And I'll just check your side. Not very happy with how that's laid there. So I'm going to come back. And I would like it to come a little bit more on your side. Again, a couple of turns. Always worth checking before you progress. Uh, there's nothing worse than carrying on without looking and then you find that you've not got what you wanted. So always check. I'm fairly happy with that. And I'm going to come in and again remove my excess. Helps to have really sharp pointed scissors for this kind of work. And that's looking not too bad. Although I'm sure if you're if you're a sea trout angler, uh, please let me know in the comments if I'm doing it all wrong and uh, this would be no good to you. So I can just uh, get a few turns in there. Still quite a lot of work to do at the head, but I'm going to add some jungle cock eyes and I'm just using a natural cape here. Uh, I'm trying to use as small a feather as I can, but because I've tied lots of dial backs in the past, my small feathers are a little sparse, but I've managed to pick out a couple of eyes that might do the job. And what I've done is I've trimmed away the guard hairs and I'm going to catch them in. I'll do my side first. couple of turns just to hold that into place and then I'm going to add the jungle cock eye to your side I'm just going to tilt my vice slightly so I get the angle and the amount correct again a couple of turns that's looking not too bad just slightly change the angle at my end, your end looks good and I can come in and remove the waste same on your side and then I can finish up the head now while I'm uh, doing that and it will take me a little bit of time uh, what I'm going to do is if you leave a comment in the the comment section below I'll I'll do a random comment picker and I'll send three of these flies off to the lucky winner uh, I can't see me taking up sea trout fishing this year I've got so much on my list already <laughs> that uh, adding another species is just not going to be viable for me so somebody else might get the use out of these if they think the flies are good enough of course now the head on this one is a little larger than I would have liked but it is what it is I think um, the thing that attracted to me this with, with this fly was the colour scheme I just think uh, the blue and the black and the the hot, the hot orange tail just really looks good and uh, I dare say a brown trout would um, take this on board as well if it wanted and I'll just cure that off now I'll probably give this a couple of coats of resin and I noticed that 
where I've tied in the jungle cock, uh, I've got a little bit of white there which I want to get rid of. So I'll just go in with a black marker and then coat it over with resin again and that'll be gone. There's always a way of fixing things. Hopefully it's not a Stanley knife and starting again. Uh, and it does come to that sometimes. But there we go. So if you leave a comment below, I'm happy to send you out the three flies. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed tying the fly. And it just adds a little bit more different techniques to your tying skill set. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all next time.